This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. There must be a hurricane coming or something. I'm all discombobulated today. <laughs> Pray for me today. <laughs> so welcome to the Lord's house. Today we gather in the name of our Lord. It is the month of October. I guess it means the month of hurricanes in Florida, it seems like. But also here, uh, it's the month of stewardship. And uh, so in the next three weeks, we'll be looking at our lives as Christian stewards, as those managers of God's gifts. And part of our life as God's stewards is our money, okay? Part, that's part of our giving. And so our uh, ser sermon series will simply be entitled Money Talks, okay? But the thing about Money Talks is that God also talks about money, okay? He talks about money quite a bit in the Bible. And so that's what we'll be specifically looking at in these next three weeks. And we'll be looking at the lives of three individuals in the Bible and how they confront uh, God's gifts of blessings and, and specifically money. And today we'll look at the man named Lot in, in Genesis chapter 19 and other places in Genesis. And we'll be looking at money's dark side today. But along with that, we'll be looking at money's bright side. And on the back side of your worship folder is, a, is an outline that you can use to take some notes or use however you see uh, fit. We welcome any guests who are with us today, and we invite our guests to sign a, and fill out a Connect card, which you'll find in your pew rack, and you can place those cards in the offering plate later on in the service. Also, there is, uh, you received a blue prayer booklet that contains uh, our current prayer requests, and we'll be lifting these people up in prayer later on in the service, and uh, you're encouraged to take this with you and make it part of your prayer life throughout the week. Also, uh, you receive coastlines, uh, which contains all the announcements regarding life in our congregation and activities coming up, uh, including our, our effort entitled Operation Christmas Child, and uh, shoe boxes are now ready to be picked up. Uh, they're out in the hallway. As you leave church, you can pick one or more up. And uh, to fill that, there are instructions inside the box. And then those will be returned Sunday, no by so Sunday, November 10th, right? Did I have that date right, Sue? Okay. And uh, please only take a shoe box or shoe boxes that you intend to fill up, okay? Because there are limited numbers of boxes that we have. And um, so uh, we want to make sure that they are taken by those who are intent to fill them up and uh, return them on, uh, as noted. Also, Operation Barnabas is sponsoring uh, the canteen campaign uh, to uh, pick up an empty plastic canteen and then in the next few weeks uh, place coins, cash, or checks in there so that uh, that will help fund our Veterans Day celebration also on Sunday, November the 10th. And again, that is noted in Coastlines as well. So let's be, uh, come together this day as the people of God, and we'll begin in your service folder on page four uh, with the invocation, and I invite you as you're able to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain that we can ne take nothing out. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap. Some people eager for money. Teach those who are rich in this present world. Teach them to be generous and willing to share. We join in our singing, our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
In today's gospel lesson, Jesus says, Take care and be on your guard against every form of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Holy God, merciful Father, We live as if you do not matter and as if we matter most. Then blind to the needs of others, we become miserly and stingy. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our beloved Creator and Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We read responsively from Psalm 49. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world. Truly, no man can ransom another or give to God the price of his life. This is the path of those who have foolish confidence, yet after them people approve of their boasts. Like sheep, they are born to be they are just like but God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world.
Good morning. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 19. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth and said, my lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, no, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, stand back. And they said, this fellow came to sojourn and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against the man Lot and drew near to to break the door down. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they wore themselves out groping for the door. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsively from Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. 
that power belongs to God and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 6. Now there is great gain in godliness with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. This is the word of the Lord. Stand to sing. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, 
who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I know we have some young men with us today. Does anybody want to come up and sit and we'll chat for a little bit? I promise it won't be, it won't be bad. <laughs> no? Yes. <laughs> We've got one there. One one. Okay. There. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> oh, right. Here comes it. Yeah, Dane's here, coming here, up. Okay. Here he goes. All right. You got your, I do. Got your thing ready? Okay. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can carry this much too much longer, Pastor. I've what got, are you? Well, you see, I'm I'm spending the night at my friend's house tonight, and I thought that maybe you know I probably should try and you know be prepared, but I don't know. This is just this it's, is so heavy. I have I have, have so much stuff. One night. Look at all I, of that stuff. It's one night. I know, but you know, <laughs> I need my I need my pillow and. I need my, I mean, I need my teddy bear. I can't, I can't go without uh, my teddy bear. I, uh, I need okay. my toothbrush. I need, I need a hat because it's going to rain. Hat. You know, I have to have all this, all this stuff. I have to have my, my clothes, my shoes. I, I need, I need all of this, you, this you, stuff. All, look at all of this stuff. I do. It coming out of the bag. It's, it's just so full. Well, you know what? That makes me think about words that came from the Bible this morning where a man was talking about all the stuff that he had. Yeah, uh-huh, right? right. You know? He had lots of stuff, that's for he did, sure. and he was so concerned about all of his stuff that I wonder if he remembered where all of his stuff came from. That happens sometimes, right? Our closets are full, our garages are full, our backpacks and our locker at school, everything's just so full. Do we forget? We forget. Well, where where does all of this stuff come from? It comes from God and it shows us the nature, the the who God is, that God is a God that gives not just a little, but gives a lot. Pastor, what well, gifts does God give us? Well, he gives us all that we need, uh, things that we need in life, kind of like food, and we need that, and we need clothes, we need that, we need a place to live. But he, yeah, we, oh, when he gives us our, 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 our teddy bear, too. Okay, all right, I'll, okay, I'll give you that. But he also gives us a lot of other things that you can't buy at a store. That's right. Like forgiveness. Of all of our sins, he gives us hope of eternal life. I mean, talk about, I mean, that is, there, there's no price tag on that. That's priceless. That's right. And so uh, God, even though whether we have lots of stuff like you have in your bag or we don't have quite as much stuff, God wants us to be rich towards him, Right? And he wants us to believe that everything, the most important things, uh, are found in him. And uh, not only the things for this life, but the things for the life that will never end. Okay? And, and Christ has done that for us by dying on the cross and rising again. So, okay. Um, I know you have a lot of stuff, but can I pray and thank God for all of our, the things that we have? I, okay, so why don't we do pray? Okay. Dear Lord God, thank you for all of the blessings that you give to us, both the things that we have and, and the, the tangible things as well as the, uh, uh, the things like forgiveness and eternal life. Lord, help us to, be, uh, to remember that all things come from you and that, we, that you want us to be rich in you, which you have done for us in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you so much Thanks for coming, for coming up, up today. Up. Okay. All right. um, while you, you clean up all your stuff there, uh, we can turn to hymn number 851 in the, in the hymnal, and we sing, Lord of glory, you have bought us. Oops.
from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10. A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is the answer for everything. Did you catch that? It's in the Bible. Right there. Money is the answer to everything. How about that? <laughs> You've got a problem. I got a solution. Money. We have a scripture verse right there. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Money is the answer to everything. Well, there we go. End of sermon. Let us pray. Actually, though, King Solomon, who is the one who wrote under the inspiration of, the, of God's Holy Spirit, the book of Ecclesiastes, is speaking these words in what we call hyperbole. Hyperbole is exagger making an exaggeration in order to make a point. So what's Solomon's point here? Although money isn't literally the answer to every problem, money can solve a lot of problems. Car repairs, home repairs, medical bills, food, water, heat, I mean air conditioning. I had to catch myself when I was typing that. I almost reverted back to Midwest thinking. Heat, no, not heat, air conditioning here in Florida. Okay? Whatever it is, money meets tangible needs. But also money solves some intangible problems, like our need for happiness and peace of mind. <laughs> need to go on a cruise? How about to the lake house, or maybe you want a more exciting life. What's the answer? Money. Now, money is indeed an essential part of life, and that's Solomon's point here in Ecclesiastes, and that's why today we begin a three-week series in here in the month of October, and we're calling this series simply Money Talks. So why are we doing this? Well, it is the month of October, and typically here in our congregation, that's when we have our stewardship emphasis, okay? In a, in a few days, you'll be receiving a, hopefully, a letter in the mail, uh, hopefully, because we don't know what the storm's going to do, but okay, all right. Uh, we're going to tend to send out a letter to all of our member houses, encouraging them to consider how God has blessed them with their money and what you intend to do in your offering for the upcoming year. So that's why we're talking about this, but there's an even better reason why I bring this whole thing up. Because, you see, if we don't manage money biblically, in the end, every other area of our life will collapse. Let me say that again, and maybe a little bit slower. If we do not manage money biblically, in the end, every other area of our lives will collapse. Our families, our marriages, our emotional and our physical health, every single area. Yes. Don't believe me? Then I invite you to meet a man in the Bible named Lot. Lot shows us money's dark side. Now, money definitely has a bright side. Again, money is a gift of God. But in sinful human hands, money has a dark side. And what's that dark side? The belief that money is literally the answer to everything. And so today's sermon will have five points 
as we look at the man named Lot. And these are listed for you on the back of your bulletin. And with them, we will see what money's dark and dangerous side is. So the first point, the historical setting. What, where is Lot? Where does he enter in the picture? Well, you may remember a man in the, in the Old Testament, famous man named Abraham. Abraham is born in the land called Ur. And he and his family moved to a place called Haran. And then in Genesis chapter 12, God calls Abraham to leave Haran and go to the land of Canaan. Because God desires to bless all the families on earth through Abraham. Now remember this. We will come back to it later on. God desires to bless all the families of the earth through him. So Abraham leaves Haran and takes his nephew, who is Lot. Abraham takes Lot with him, and now they live in Canaan. And living in Canaan, Abraham has wealth, and that's in the form of livestock. Lot also has livestock. And Abraham's livestock grows. So his wealth grows. And lives, Lot's livestock also grows. But the land isn't big enough for all of their livestock. So Abraham's men begin fighting with Lot's men. And that's not a good thing. So Abraham tells Lot, look, let's not fight about this. Instead, let's divide the land between the two of us. And Lot, you get the first pick. You know, it's like when we were kids. If I cut the cake, I had to give my brother the first choice. You know, that kind of, uh, maybe how it goes. Okay, so Lot gets the, Abraham gives Lot the first pick. Genesis chapter 13. Lot looked out and saw the entire plain of the Jordan. That, and it was well watered everywhere like the Lord's garden and the land and like the land of Egypt. So Lot chose the entire plain of the Jordan for himself. That's what Genesis 13 says. So Lot looks out at the whole Jordan River Valley, and what does he see? He sees abundance, he sees prosperity, he sees wealth. Translation, Lot sees money, money, money. The land looks like the Garden of the Lord, what we would call the Garden of Eden. And what would that be? That would be called paradise. Lot sees the prosperity of the Jordan Valley, and he thinks, this is paradise. My friends, I invite you to meet money's dark side where life is defined solely in financial terms. Once I get that land, once I get that promotion, once I get that house, once I get that inheritance, once I cash in, I'll finally be in paradise. With this new land, Lot thinks he's in paradise. However, his money has a dark side. So that's the historical setting. Now let's go on to the second point, the city of Sodom. What does the Bible say about the city of Sodom? Well, again, Genesis chapter 13. The men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. People are wicked, sinning against the Lord today. They were doing the same thing back then. The city of Sodom had grown prosperous, but it, they were prosperous because they oppressed people. The city of Sodom had raked in boatloads of big bucks by taking advantage of people. Oppressed people then in the city of Sodom cried out to God for justice. And the, the Bible says that the outcry against Sodom was very great. So how is Lot related to the city of Sodom? 
Well, in Genesis 13, we read that Lot lived outside of Sodom. Then in the next chapter, Lot moves within Sodom. And then in chapter 19, we read that Lot stood in the city gate of Sodom. My friends, that's a big deal. Because in the, in the ancient Near East, to stand in the gate meant that you were a community big shot. You were a leader. You were elected to the city council. So Lot is an upcoming mover and shaker in the city of Sodom. Now recall that along with the city of Gomorrah, God was going to destroy Sodom for its wickedness. But before God destroys Sodom, he shows mercy to Lot and his family. He sends two angels disguised as men to come and save Lot and his family from the coming judgment. So these two men, who are really angels, enter the town. We heard, now, this is what we heard in today's Old Testament reading. They enter the town. Everyone refuses to show them hospitality except for Lot. So soon the men of Sodom gather at Lot's door, and they tell him that they want to uh, basically take advantage of these angels, sexual, these sexually take advantage of these angels disguised as men, and Lot says, no way, Jose. Then in one of the greatest parenting failures of all time, Lot says, hey, I've got two daughters. They have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you. You can do to them as you please. What are you thinking, Lot? What are you thinking? Well, Lot is willing to sacrifice his own daughters in order to keep his financial standing in Sodom. My friends, money has a dark side. Now let's go to the third point, the sorry standard. Lot has made some poor choices, <laughs> especially with his daughters. Thankfully, angels intervene. They strike the men of Sodom with blindness, and then they tell Lot, look, you've got to get out of here right now. So Lot goes to his sons-in-laws and says, hey, we've got to get out of here. God's going to destroy this place. <laughs> but the thing is, the Bible tells us his sons-in-laws thought he was joking. Translation, when Lot starts talking about God, his family thinks he's joking. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Lot has lived as though money were the answer to everything. But now he says, it's time to listen to God. And his family says, what? You're kidding, right? That's a joke, right? You see, Lot's actions do not line up with his word. That's why his family doesn't take his words about God seriously. My friends, that's a warning for us as well. Our children and grandchildren imitate who we are, not who we say we are. Let me say that again. Our children imitate who we are, not who we say we are. Lot says, listen to God. But his family doesn't take him seriously because Lot doesn't take God seriously. His God talk sounds like a joke. The angels tell Lot and his family, leave the city. Don't look back. But as they're leaving, what does Lot's wife do? She looks back. Why does she do that? She does it because she cannot let go of all of her money. And what happens? She becomes a pillar of salt. The last time we hear anything about Lot in the, in the Bible, he's living in a cave with his two daughters. Lot's two daughters fear they are not going to have any children, so they get their dad drunk and trick Lot into sleeping with them, and both daughters end up pregnant. How ironic. 
Lot tells the men of Sodom to take sexual advantage of his own daughters, but his daughters end up taking sexual advantage of Lot. And the result? Lot's family loses everything. Literally. Why? They thought money was the answer to everything. My friends, in sinful human hands, that's money's very, very dark, destructive, demonic side. But, thanks be to God, there's also a bright side to money. Next point on your outline, the lasting salvation. In Genesis chapter 12, God promised Abraham, I told you I'd come back to this, all families on earth will be blessed through you. Through Abraham, God wanted to bless Lot and his family, but money's dark side destroyed them all. God also wants to bless our families. How? Well, he blesses our families through Abraham, and then through Abraham to Isaac, and then to Jacob, and then Judah, and then ultimately to David, and then to Jesus. Jesus. Money meets tangible needs. Money meets intangible needs. But only Jesus, the crucified and risen Jesus, crucified outside the city of Jerusalem, only he meets our deepest needs. Our deepest needs. Forgiveness. Love. Meaning purpose, acceptance, hope. Only Jesus, hanging on the cross and risen again, fills the gaping emptiness of our hearts. Jesus, crucified and risen, that's how God blesses all the families of the earth, including you and me. Money is temporary, but Jesus is eternal. Money comes and goes. You know, they say money talks. Mine says goodbye. Okay. It comes and goes, but Jesus stays through thick and thin. Money says, work to get more of me. Jesus says, I've done it all for you. Money leaves us when we die. Jesus stays with us even in the valley of the shadow of death and leads us to everlasting life, which takes us to our final point, the sensible solution. The sensible solution to breaking the dark side of money, it comes from the Bible itself. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income. And so here God is directing our giving to be personal, proportionate, and planned. It's personal because it's different for everyone. God has blessed each one of us and each one of our households in different ways. And so our giving is unique to us and to our situation. Our giving is also proportionate. God blesses us in different ways and also with different amounts. And so the Bible reminds us, set aside for your giving a sum in keeping with your income. The amount of our giving moves with the amount of our income. Percentage giving is another way to take a look at it. Regardless of what it is, I'm going to give a percentage. And also our giving is planned. Like so many other things in life, our giving needs to be planned. If it's not planned, what happens when things are not planned? So often, they do not happen. Like I said, our member households will be receiving a letter this week uh, from John Chaperone, our finance and stewardship chairman, encouraging each of us to plan our giving for the year 2025. 
And God directs our giving to be personal, proportionate, planned, and it's always done with another P, prayerfully, prayerfully. Money talks. That's the theme of our series this October. Indeed, money does talk. The dark side of money says, get, get, get. My friends, that can destroy us. Don't believe me? Just ask Lot. <laughs> There's a better and brighter side of money that also talks and speaks to us a different G word. Give. Give. Jesus says, as I have given to you. In his name, amen. May the peace of God that pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As the Lord's people who have been called to his purpose uh, with his blessings, we come before the Lord in prayer today. Today in our prayers, we lift up uh, in our prayers those who are listed in our blue prayer booklet. We've also been asked to pray for the nephew of Mike Dannert, Charlie Baker. Uh, uh, after his second eye surgery, he now has some sight. We pray for continued healing for Charlie. And also we pray for a friend of Jim Sargis named John, who has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, in a world ruled by greed and governed by the empty accumulation of wealth, guard us against every form of covetousness. Help us to see that our lives do not consist in the abundance of possessions, but in Christ, our one heavenly treasure, who makes us rich toward you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to set our minds on things above, where Christ is seated at your right hand, that all earthly passions may be put to death within us, and that the new self that we have put on in our baptism may rise and live and serve before you each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the work of our hands is vanity under the sun, but whatever is undertaken in your name will stand forever. Prosper the work of our church, our missionaries here and throughout the world. Lord, also keep our pastors and church workers standing in Christ alone, that they may not give their hearts up to despair over their toil, but know that all that your word does through them will abide forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, to your kindness, we commend all who have been entrusted with public service in our land. Keep them ever mindful that they will give an account to you. Protect them from every impulse to serve themselves and their own self-interests. Fill them with your wisdom. Make them a blessing to our people. Govern our nation, Lord, and every nation, so that we and all people live with justice, peace, and the necessities of life on this earth. Lord, especially bless our nation during this election season. We also pray that you would overcome selfish rulers, cruel tyrants, those who delight in terror and all threats of violence, including those in the Middle East and throughout the world. In your time, grant peace and bring an end to all conflicts and send your angels to protect those who are protecting our welfare. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, sustain all those affected by the devastation wrought by Hurricane Helene. Give the peace of your presence to those who mourn the death of loved ones, as well as to those who have lost home, property, or business, or employment. Give your blessing to all who seek to bring relief and care to these devastated lives, broken hearts, and injured bodies. Lord, we also ask that you would grant your presence, protection, and providence 
to this state as we prepare for a major hurricane this upcoming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, be near to those who are suffering in mind or body, including Charlie and John and all those whom we've named, together with those that we lift up to you silently in our hearts. Lord, grant them healing that their suffering may be alleviated and their minds and bodies return to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you graciously open up the storehouse of your mercy for us in the feast of your Son's body and blood. Prepare us with this gift for the day when our souls will be required of us, that we might joyfully come before you in the forgiveness that you have laid up for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, dear Father, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship now continues as we gather our tithes and offerings and grateful thanks to our Lord and to support the ongoing mission and ministry of his church that many others may know of the treasure that they have in Christ. We now prepare our hearts to receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus. As we do so, and as you're able, I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. My kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us stand to sing. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We, we sing and pray, gracious God, you send great blessings.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.